The Valerian model, that was interesting because we've done architectural models in the past, never at this scale. I mean, this model is huge. Eight metres long, that's a massive model to make. I think we could have gone a bit bigger, to be honest. <laughs> What happens is if you're a showrunner or a show, you say, wouldn't it be interesting if there was a model of Valeria and then you show up on set and it's a city in its own right? Viserys is not into dragon riding. He takes a more intellectual pursuit. The idea is that he's gone back to all the old texts and maps and has painstakingly recreated it. It is truly wondrous what you've built. It's sort of like Viserys' train set. It's his little hobby that he has there that he escapes to. The king's model of old Valyria is a huge exercise in itself. It starts small and it gradually gets bigger and bigger and takes over the apartment. We were trying to decide what he would have made it out of. So what are his tools? What's he making it with? And what scale is it? Because ancient Valyria is a dragon town, so everything is big. You know, I brought a pumice stone from my bathroom home. <laughs> that was my reference and just the pigmentation in that and the darkness, the different texture and depth you could get from that. So then we latched onto pumice stone, which is a much softer, more volcanic stone and ties into Dragonstone and Dragonmont and the volcanic nature of that island. I only pour over the histories and provide the plans. The stonemasons built the structures. The whole thing was drawn up by our concept artist and put into workable files so that they could just print out the blocks and then some of it they sculpted freehand as well, so it was a mixture. They had to look handmade, but obviously we couldn't make an eight metre model out of pumice. So we had to come up with a technique of making it quickly, but also give the finish of pumice. The 3D printers were our little soldiers in the background, working for about two months, 24 seven, printing out hundreds of buildings. A lot of the buildings so large, they had to be made in small components, so we had to glue them back together again. All the main buildings, just all 3D printed, take about 24, 48 hours for that one building to be done. We've done it all in PLA plastic on these machines, so it's, the beauty is with a machine, you do get a hard edge finish, but then we can go over it with textures and finishes and paint effects to make it look like the pumice stone. The 3D printer's got about three or four layers of plaster over it, so we had to soften off the, the edges, window frames, and all that sort of stuff. This one looks more hand carved. It just grows and grows and grows. It gets bigger in each episode. There's over 200 pieces. I think I'm the only one that knows where they go, so. It was made in five stages. Each stage had A, B, C, D, and E. And then we made it so it's joined together without any seam line. It was an amazing piece that became five separate units that we could put together, but also take apart. It was always in about six or eight pieces, but then schedules change and that piece is in, that one's out. It's all got to be mobile, but all go together and look like one piece as well. As the king is getting older, he can't spend as much time, but he wants to finish it, so it becomes a bit more blocky. Right near the end of the season, he hasn't touched it, so he's got cobwebs, so it's quite heavy on here, just to give it like, a bit of age to it. It's only when we finally got it all on set and all dressed in that you really stand back and, and see the work we've done. And that's very, very rewarding. It's an uh, integral part of our story, which is, although Viserys is very much a progressive Targaryen, he yearns for the Valyria of old, looking in some way to understand something that he can never quite grasp.